Every year, I know one of the favorite things that some of you guys love is when we bring students, young people, that have taken the banner that you older generation has so faithfully carried and are pushing forth in their communities and on their campuses for life. Students for Life of America has been doing a fantastic job organizing all these students, and every year there are more groups than there were the year before. And one of the fantastic reasons that it's growing so much is because Students for Life pays for a full-time regional coordinator in the Northwest working in more states than she probably can handle. <laughs> I would like you please to welcome the new Students for Life Northwest Regional Coordinator, Katie Logic. Hi everyone, my name is Katie. Um, as Liberty said, I am the new Northwest Regional Coordinator with Students for Life of America. Um, I work to train and equip student pro-life groups in middle schools, high schools, home schools, colleges, medical and law schools, in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Alaska, and Hawaii. Students for Life is the nation's largest pro-life youth organization. Um, we now have over 1,000 Students for Life groups nationwide. I stand before you today as a young woman, as a daughter, as a sister, and as a friend to tell you that abortion is the greatest human rights injustice of our day. And that it is this generation that will abolish abortion. I am so excited about what's happening here in Oregon. We have 20 active Students for Life groups across the state. Um, they're working to educate their peers on abortion and to support the pregnant and parenting students on their campus, to show them that they can continue school and keep their child. They have hosted diaper drives on their campuses and in turn, donated thousands of diapers to their local pregnancy resource centers. They have sidewalk counseled outside of Planned Parenthood on a weekly basis. <laughs> and they've been flyering and tabling on their campuses just to show their peers that atrocities of abortion and that there is a network of students there to support them if they do find themselves in an unplanned pregnancy. They have been, <laughs> they have been the activists that we need to change the culture, not just to make abortion illegal, but to make abortion unthinkable. Our student leaders are the people who do not back down in the face of opposition. They stand up against injustice, and they are willing to sacrifice their own personal comfort to be a fearless voice for the voiceless. As the pro-life generation, we will not sit back silently when we have the opportunity to speak up. We will not walk away when we have the opportunity to continue walking forward. And we will continue day by day to fight for the lives of the most innocent and vulnerable of our society. Because as William Wilberforce said, you can choose to look away but you can never say again that you did not know. So it is no longer enough for us just to say that we're pro-life. 
just to say that we hold pro-life beliefs. It is time for us to act. This generation's passion and dedication is turning the tide. We, we are shifting the debate and we are winning. So here with me today are five amazing and dedicated leaders um, from schools across Portland. And they are the perfect example of how this generation is taking huge strides to make abortion unthinkable. So they're gonna share with you some of their goals for this year and share with you just a little bit about what they did last year. So take it away, guys. Raise your hand if you're ready to march in the path of social justice. I, Michelle Ivesich, Central Catholic Students for Life president and founder, am ready. <laughs> My high school club is cementing its foundations this year with education. We're setting up informational displays in our commons, having brown bag lunches to begin dialogue, and are going to conferences in pursuit of informing the target victims of the abortion industry. But beyond that, we've chosen to act. We volunteer at events that are pro-child and pro-woman, like the 300, and intend to have drives to supply crisis pregnancy centers. At one of these events, I remember standing on MLK Boulevard, specifically for Life Chain, and a man shouted out his window, Get a life! <laughs> yeah. Many people misunderstand us, our mission. I know we all have responsibilities as parents, children, employees, and students, but there's still so much dedication for the pro-life cause. Why? because we're thankful for what we've been given. We know what an amazing gift it is to be alive. And since I know that it is our true nature to be inherently good, we want others to have the opportunities we have. We want to promote the opportunity for more life. That is why we are persistent. It is our inner mission to allow equal opportunity. Isn't that what part of the American identity is? not to mention what this very nation was founded upon. John Locke believed that everyone, everyone had the natural right to life. And we the people have the right to abolish any part of government that infringes that right. We will abolish abortion. <laughs> but only with a unified voice speaking for those who cannot speak for themselves yet. If you're religious, speak through prayer. If you're a person of action, speak through volunteering. And if you want to become part of the pro-life movement, use your voice to ask how you can become involved. Do something that makes your conscience scream, justice. I'm calling you out. What will you do to show that all lives matter? Good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Lang, and I am the president of the Students for Life Club at Lynn Benton Community College in Albany, Oregon. A lot of what our club does is educate our peers on this it's such important issue. Um, last term, we did a table called Abortion Laws in Oregon, and uh, we had a poll, and the question that we asked was, should abortion remain legal through all nine months of pregnancy? And uh, it was surprising to see that most of the students were shocked by this question. We had a lot of students come up and ask if this was even true. And uh, it's sad to say that it is. Um, this question started a lot of amazing conversations with students. I remember one girl um, put a sticker on the no side, and I asked her, okay, so, when do you think the cutoff point should be? When do you think that it's not okay to have an abortion? And uh, she, she didn't know, she didn't have an answer to my question. So I was able to show her the, um, 
fetal development models that we have. And uh, upon showing her the 12 week one, 12 week old model, she was so surprised. And uh, she came from the position of, well, it's the woman's body. And I said, well, actually, it's not the woman's body. The baby has its own DNA, its own blood type. And she was just absolutely astonished by this information. And uh, she walked away from that table uh, with a changed mind and a changed heart. I gave her a baby model to take away with her, a little 12-week handout one. And she was so enthusiastic about it. She, looked, she walked away as if she was going to tell everyone she knew about this. And I was just amazed that I was able to be a part of that in changing her heart and her mind. It's such, it's such a privilege to be a part of this movement and standing here in front of you all today. And I'm truly honored to work in this movement with you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Annabelle Guptill and I'm the president at Corbin University in Salem, Oregon for our Students for Life Club there. Um, unlike many universities and student leaders, I have the privilege of being the president at a Christian university and having an awesome um, group of people to surround me with their prayers and um, just support. So that's awesome. But uh, going into Corbin and taking over being the president of the club was kind of crazy because I didn't realize how many people on my Christian university didn't really know um, or really want to know, agree with, or even care about what's going on right now um, with the unborn. And so what I have been trying to do and what our club's goals been this year is the educational aspect and really going out and trying to gather people in and educate them on um, everything that has been going on. So how we've been, how we've done that is uh, with help of the Students for Life of America, we were able to bring in some tabletop displays. Uh, one of my favorites was the What About Rape tabletop display. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little crazy. Like, whoa, people don't want to be thinking about that as they're walking down to lunch. But it brought up some really great conversations. A lot of people wrote, uh, wrote down, um, yeah, I think that abortion in the case of rape is okay. And so we'd ask them, why do you think so? Uh, what's your reasoning behind that? And as we engaged in conversations, it really challenged us. And I think it really challenged them to think through why what they believe. And we had a lot of people change their answer over and be like, thank you for talking to us about that. We even had some professors uh, stop by and talk to us. So that was really awesome. I was excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> good. Um, this semester, we're really excited to be uh, going out and being a little bit more active. This year, we're planning a campus-wide diaper drive. As Katie mentioned at the beginning, we're going to hopefully raise lots of, or bring in lots of diapers and baby clothes and donate that to our local pregnancy resource center. And so we are super excited to be doing that. And we have some people going down to the San Francisco rally next weekend. Um, yeah, woohoo! So we're excited. <laughs> We're excited to be kind of going out and taking a little bit more action, and uh, quite a few of us are here today too. So thank you for having us, and yeah, thank you. Hi, my name is Nixon Hustanyani. I'm the president of Clackamas Community College in Oregon City. First and foremost, I want to thank someone very special who's here with me. It's my mom, who is up front and taking videos. Um, 19 years, she's been my life support, and I can't thank her so much for allowing me to live my life and to fulfill it as she wants me to do. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, this is my first year being the president at Clackamas Community College. Uh, in fact, it's my first time being president of any club at any time in my life. So I'm very thankful to be part of this very great club.
um, I've only been uh, with the club for two terms, so I don't have much about the past uh, couple years. But I'm looking forward to this next coming uh, term with all the events that are going to be happening, and of course the next uh, term also. Uh, I my club is planning to create a Mother's Day slash um, maternity uh, drive where we'll be hosting at my school uh, uh, bins so we can place maternal clothes and we'll also be doing a Mother's Day gift card where we're gonna be thanking all the mothers that have given their life to allow everyone to live. Also, uh, our very own Katie Logic will be coming to our campus to uh, give a tour and I'm so excited for her to come to our school. I want to thank everyone for coming out today and uh, let's live life to our fullest. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Marco Sanchez and I'm the president of JFK for Life. I attend John F. Kennedy High School in Mount Angel, Oregon, about an hour away from here. My journey started at Oregon Right to Life's Camp Joshua in March of 2016. It began my passion for the pro-life movement. Camp Joshua transformed my life. I began a pro-life club this year at my high school and it has been a valuable, valuable learning experience. Many times before forming the club, I would quite frequently second guess myself. Questions consumed me like, how many students will join? Or will I get resistance from others? There were also times when I felt very discouraged. Finally, I dug in and said to myself, I am doing this and I won't let anything stop me. <laughs> Seeing you all today just reaffirmed to me that I'm not the only one fighting for lives to be saved. With violence, starvation, and disease surrounding us each day and the culture of life or the culture of death being everywhere we look, it's hard to pay attention to the culture of life. With forming JFK for Life, I felt I made, the I made the culture of life in my community shine a little brighter. My club has 18 members. That, that may sound small, but with a student population of 190, it's a fair amount. So far this year, I have sparked the conversation of the pro-life movement on campus. I have also hosted an apologetic training course with my members, thanks to the help of Students for Life of America's Katie Logic, the Northwest Regional Coordinator. Yesterday, we actually hosted a guest speaker, Gail Atterbury, to speak with the club about physician-assisted suicide. For the next following months, I plan on getting club t-shirts for each member and hosting drives for young mothers in need of resources. Keep in mind that if we light a candle, it dimly lights a room. However, if all of us together light a candle, it will enlighten the world. Unite your candle with others to enlighten your campus with the pro-life movement. Start a pro-life club at your school. If one already exists, join one. Bring the culture of life to your community. Thank you.